Hi, welcome to a, another video. Um, this is a, a time lapse um, with a bit of a difference really. It's, it's 10 times uh, the speed, plus I've cut out quite a few of the bits. And, and this is part one of a 32 hour uh, drawing of this horse. Um, he's called Roo. Um, he's, uh, I took the photos myself and basically I just wanted to take you through uh, very briefly how um, I lay down my colour, how important the uh, the layering is, uh, especially on the paper that I use. So I use Clairefontaine um, pastel matte. This is the dark grey. I use the dark grey and the white predominantly. Um, the dark grey I use for uh, darker animals just because it, it really gives you a head start with the mid-tones um, and it's a really beautiful paper to use. It is it is textured. It feels quite velvet. It's almost like you feel velvet the, the wrong way um, and it takes a huge amount of layers um, but I'm also finding with my work that you can actually use um, really quite minimal layers as well with quite good effect um, you'll see as the as the pencil goes down it, it looks quite gritty to begin with which can be quite frustrating when you first start using the paper because you you, you put the pencil down and you're thinking oh my goodness how am I going to get a, a you know a lovely smooth um, layered finish um, but actually, as you build the colour up, um, it smooths out and you, you find that um, as you get to know the paper and you get to know how the pencils work on it and how the pencils work together, um, you will find certain pencils are fantastic over the top of other pencils to help smooth and blend. Um, you can also see that I'm using a variety of different pencils um, in this particular portrait. So I use predominantly the Faber-Castell Polychromos um, and I use a variety of the colours in there um, and I'm also using the Caran d'Ache Pablos um, specifically the, the ivory black is a really lovely rich black um, and used over the top of, of other colours helps to give a really really deep um, rich black uh, and then you'll also see that I use uh, the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils um, which have, have got some really beautiful um, light hues uh, I'm using a, um, a pan pastel soft tool as well just in places I don't usually use things to blend my pencil um, but in the main area um, it just helps to kind of soften out the, the, the frizzy look uh, and just blend everything and I found that the soft tools are really really useful again on the pastel mat with the coloured pencils um, this video will end up being uh, real time with time lapse uh, included with voiceover and as a written tutorial but I just thought I'd quite like to put something onto YouTube just so that you can see the process and, and actually um, you know how in depth it is to draw fur uh, you know, um, and, and, and how, how long it takes basically and this is about 15 hours squashed into about seven minutes um, you know so it really is quite time consuming but um, you get some fantastic results um, you know the, the fur you can again see how gritty it, it looks but as you start using especially the terracotta that I'm using there that's sort of um, the orangey colour um, that's that goes down really quite smoothly and blended with the, sort of like the caput mortems and everything like that it um, it really does help to give to smooth out and blend um, So again, as with a lot of my pieces, I use the dark indigo uh, to create the lovely, rich, dark, sort of chocolatey brown together with the caput mortems and the um, and the burnt sienna. It's a, it's a really great colour to use to really bring out those, those rich tones. So you can see there are a, really are a lot of layers going down into this neck area and it can be a little bit, I'm not, I don't want to say boring because it, it's never boring drawing, but it can be a little bit um, not particularly exciting, so maybe boring, <laughs> um, you know, drawing the large expanse of, of the neck area. Uh, but it's so important drawing a portrait that, the, that every single piece of the portrait is... 
um, you spend time and care uh, working on it you know so the neck area is as important as the face and the eye and and sometimes especially with horses that are facing right um, I will start with the neck first because it's, it's almost like it's getting over and done with um, whereas if I do the head and the face it's like I've got nothing to look forward to it might sound a little bit odd but um, you know that 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 um, enormous expanse of neck um, can be quite daunting but you know just breaking it down and 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 then standing back and having a look at it can really help you um, identify with the piece and, and enjoy drawing it. I think drawing manes and forelocks on horses can be really quite um, challenging and it can be quite scary uh, to begin with um, thinking how on earth am I going to be able to build up um, you know all of that colour and create that sort of fluffy looking mane um, and it's, it's, it's all about the, the layering process and just building it's almost like building from the inside out it's almost like sculpting um, you know you just put layer on layer you darken the shadows you put some highlights in you darken the shadows again you put some more highlights in you put some mid-tones in and and that way yes it can take you know quite some time but that way you then start to really get the feel of hair lying over hair of the um of the shadow areas and it and it looks like a, a properly formed mane So this is uh, part one of um, probably two videos. Um, like I say, there's about 15 hours gone into this. So there's another 15, 16, 17 hours um, worth of video to come. It will be a, um, in real time. It will be a, a, a full how-to tutorial. Um, and I'd love you to subscribe. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, and um, thank you for watching my video.